Watch you guys, today we'll take a look at the most powerful mini PC that we have tested on this channel. This is the B-Link GTR6. This is a pretty powerful mini PC that will probably do everything you want it to do. So let's take a look at what you get inside the box here. This is everything you're going to get. You're going to get the main PC itself. You're going to get your power plug. This is for the UK, but you'll have one for your country. An 8K supported HDMI cable on here. And we also have the back plate if you want to mount it. And we also have a very short uh, cable here, HDMI cable, very short one, which supports 8K as well. We have some screws and we also have the power adapter itself. Pretty good power adapter, this one. Let me quickly rotate this so we can see the specs. Output is 19 volts, uh, 6.32 amps, and we have 120.08 uh, watts on this particular power unit here. The power adapter does come with a barrel connector. The user manual has uh, English text and colored pictures here, which helps you understand on how to open up your device, how to upgrade it, and change any sort of drives or anything like that or upgrade the memory you can do all that by the user manual i'll show you inside as well and then we have the mini pc itself which we'll take a closer look at we've got these top covers here which allow you to change the color design for the top plate here if you want to there is some breathable air that goes through here because there's a fan on the top of this and on the bottom to add extra cooling now these top covers are interchangeable you can change these to two other designs if you want to they do have an actual area where it allows air to blow through we have a fingerprint sensor on the top as well we have our power switch our rtc key which is our clear cmos a usb 3.2 gen 2 uh, port on here type c port on the front and our audio jack on the front there as well and we have our go faster sticker with the ryzen 9 6000 series on there so let's go ahead and look on the side. We have the GTR with a bit of a uh, breathing here, a bit of a uh, ventilation. And on the other side, we have the same thing, GTR with some uh, breathing ventilation holes. Do like the design look on there. On the back, we have that big exhaust area for the uh, unit itself. And on the back, we do have our power adapter, DC. Also our LAN, which is our 2.5 gigahertz for HDMI 8K uh, ports on here, USB 3.2 Gen 2, two of those, and two USB 2.0 on the back there. Not sure why we have two USB 2.0 ports on there, but it would have been nice to see a Type-C on the back as well, or maybe some sort of Thunderbolt on the back. It would have been nice to see that. But that is what you get on the back here. You've got this big exhaust area here. This is going to dissipate the heat from inside here. On the back of the device, this is where we can gain access to here as well. And there is also uh, on the back here, there is a fan. So these are the full specs. You've got your Ryzen 9 6900HX, 8 core, 16 threads. Base clock is 3.3 gigahertz, maximum boost up to 4.9 gigahertz. We have the AMD Radeon 680M graphics, which is 12 cores, frequency of 2400 megahertz. The GPU max memory is 2 gigabytes. Crucial dual channel DDR5 4800 megahertz. Maximum expansion is up to 64 gigabytes. It does have two M.2 slots uh, that support PCI Express 4.0, and uh, these can be upgraded to two terabytes each. Uh, we have a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive slot uh, on there, and also have Wi Fi 6E support and also Bluetooth 5.2 support on this one. Four HDMI ports, as we've already said. Quad screen 8K display at 60 Hertz, 2.5 GBPS LAN port for super fast uh, transfer speeds on your network. And we have a patented dual fan design for cooling. This means we're getting really good cooling on this mini PC. And that's probably one of the biggest problems with mini PCs, and that's dissipating heat. But this seems to have no issues with that with this new uh, patented design. So I'm going to remove the back plate here so you can see inside because it's important that you see inside if you're going to be thinking about buying a mini PC. Now on the back here, you can see there's some instructions on how to get into the BIOS and things like that, which is a nice added touch. And we can see this uh, exhaust fan here and this, like, this little 
tunnel in here. There's also one on the top, which I'll show you in a in a bit. I'm just going to remove this covering here that covers the actual motherboard itself. So I'm just going to undo these three screws. There's three of them here. There's one here and there's one on each corner here. So I just need to remove these. Once this has been removed, this will give us access to the main board here. So this is what it looks like inside. We've got a big chunky heatsink here with a thermal pad on it. And that is a fan that just plugs into the main board. So that could be replaced if it breaks uh, at some point. And again, once this is all enclosed, this will act like a vacuum and just draw out all of that heat uh, from there and cool down all the components. So let's take a look at the actual board itself so we can get a closer look here of what it looks like. Now, again, this does have also major branded parts in here, which is a good uh, sign because sometimes they put cheaper unknown branded parts in these. But this one from B-Link, as you can see here, does have branded parts in here. We do have Kingston. Uh, memory inside here and we also have Kingston um, drive here this is the Kingston KC 3000 series drive and we also have this Kingston memory in here as well which is very nice to see branded parts in here now we do have space for a uh, another drive here you can see this is the KC 3000 series from Kingston which is super fast speeds I'll show you the speeds in a second and we can put another one in here for storage if we wanted to uh, which is quite useful. Uh, so I do like uh, the way they've designed this. We've got that Wi-Fi card on here. That is Wi-Fi uh, 6E, which is decent Wi-Fi as well for a mini PC. So that is the actual internals of it here. Let me just quickly uh, put this back together and flip it over and we'll take the top off. So like I said earlier in the video, you can replace these top plates here to, a, to one of your choice. And it does come with a couple of them here. And you can see they just clip in. But there is some breathable material here which allows the air to blow through. So you can see here there is an area where the fan is going to sit. So to remove this, I just got a, a small screwdriver and just poked it down the side and unclipped it. And this removes the top cover. And you can see that fan here. Uh, and this is going to be useful for keeping the unit cool. So let me just go ahead and change this to another plate here. And these just clip into position. So that will be a red one on here. I do like this other one here. So I'm probably going to be putting this one on for this mini PC. And I'll be keeping this uh, for myself to use for some sort of uh, tutorials. Nice to see a fingerprint sensor on here. But you just push this round on the outside here and clip it into place. And I do like the look and design of this uh, particular uh, speckled uh, sort of look here. I do like that. So let's go ahead and get some benchmarks done. That's probably what you're all here to do. I'll try and hopefully leave some timestamps in the video description. But as you can see, idle, we're not getting any temperature issues here. Let me just quickly reset these just in case I've been doing something previously. There we go. And these are the idle uh, temperatures. You can see we're getting 40 Celsius, 39 Celsius. Super cool um, temperatures here from a mini PC with a Ryzen 9 in it. Now, when I do some uh, benchmarks for the drive, you can see the reads and writes 7,025, and the writes are 3,931 on the actual uh, drive here. So super fast reads and write speeds for this particular drive, as you'd expect being Kingston KC 3000 series. So your data transfer is gonna be super quick. Let's move on to the next test. We're going to do some playback here, some footage for videos and stuff like that so you get an idea. So I'm going to play this uh, Jellyfish one here. We'll try this on a Windows Media Player. And this is the 400 Mbps. And this is 4K Ultra HD, HEVC. And it's also 10-bit, which is quite a difficult file to play. And you can see it's playing this no problem at all. I'll try and skip here to see whether it can skip whether it freezes up and it just catches up and there we go and i'll skip back again and we'll give it one more test here it just takes a bit of time to catch up because it is quite a difficult file to play i'll play it in another player here this is an older style player and you can see it plays okay in here no problem at all and uh, we'll move on to the next test which is i want to do some streaming on this i'll just quickly do one more drag and start here 
but yeah works pretty well on that file and that's quite a difficult file to play this one is 4k quad full hd 3840 by 2160 at 60 fps that plays that no problem at all and we've got a normal 1080p playback here so if you want to play 1080p videos no problem at all by playing video movies or 4k movies you can play all of these on this particular device so let's go ahead and do time spy this is 2639 and we'll also run the night raid uh, benchmark which is 26,000 and 78 that is for the graphics there let's go ahead and run the cpu benchmarks for geekbench and you can see single core is 1565 multi-core is 9023 we'll run the complete benchmarks here and you can see 31930 for that particular benchmark now again with games it can play games these are the settings i'm going to be running here uh, refresh rate is uh, 60 hertz 1920 by 1080 p and again, the graphics settings on these, let's take a quick look at the graphics settings. So I'm gonna leave these all on high here. And also we've got some other settings on there. Now, again, this is 35 FPS, but you can tweak this. I'm, I'm just trying to push it to see whether it can handle this sort of uh, high level, but you could probably lower the graphics quality a little bit and get higher frame rates, easy reach 60 FPS on this, and it will still look great. Uh, by tweaking the graphics to your liking but i'm here to test to see how far i can push it now again 1920 by 1080p and again we'll leave this on unlimited here and there's a bunch of other settings i'm going to leave here and uh, let me just pull this down we've got these settings on low terrain and a bunch of other stuff like that but it is on 1920 by 1080 and again, with a bit of uh, tweaking with the graphics settings, I reckon you could have quite an enjoyable experience with games like this, at no problem at all, um, once you get them set to how you like them. I'm just trying to play these at 1920 by 1080 and trying to push uh, the graphics to see how far we can push it. And you can see there's a bit of jumping around, but we're getting 50 FPS, which isn't too bad. And I think a little bit more tweaking there, you can get that a little bit more stable. The odd micro starter there as you'd expect at 1920 by 1080 p but you could settle that down a little bit with some graphic settings, no problem at all. And it is completely playable once you get this set up the way you like it. So pretty impressive really for a onboard uh, graphics like this. Now we're gonna try Counter-Strike here as well. Now it should be able to handle this because this is a, a an older style game. But again, uh, it just goes to show you how advancements have been made over the years. Uh, you would have been happy with FPS like that, you know, 10 years ago. But it just goes to show you what we can get nowadays from a natural graphics on a chip. Now let's go on to Dirt 4. This is 1920 by 1080 p Again, we'll try and play this at this resolution to see whether we can play games at 1920 by 1080 And again, you can uh, tweak your graphics settings. Uh, to suit and you should be able to get a nice steady uh, 60 fps with some of these games no problem at all if you uh, play around with the graphic settings and it should be able to handle those uh, sort of settings and also alleviate any sort of micro stutters that you're seeing on the screen here because i'm pushing it towards its limits now again if you're doing 4k video editing this should be able to handle 4k video editing no problem at all with that ryzen 9 processor in here so I'm pretty sure it'll be able to handle this. Now, this is 1920 by 1080. And we'll see if we get any warping or any sort of micro stutters. And again, you will be able to fettle with your settings to get your settings just right. If you look up on the top left, you can see the power draw there, 37 watts. And uh, you can see here, we are now playing this game. No problem at all. It's not, it's playable and there's not too much warping and things like that going on so pretty decent uh, for gameplay and again this will be able to handle all your retro games if you want to play emulation on here uh, anything that you want to play on here ret uh, for retro sort of games it will be able to handle all of those no problems whatsoever so if that is your thing 
then you should be able to do all of that on this particular device. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. The links will be in the video description if you're interested. Big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.